What's up guys? I'm just out here doing a little rainy day woodwork and I had several of you comment and message me about the inner workings of this thing and kind of wanted to see more about how it works. So that's what we're gonna do today. So we'll just let that go through a couple cycles and <clears throat> give you time to look for moving parts. But the physics and mechanics of it are actually pretty simple. Um, it has a drive motor down here. The, this one happens to be a wound spring, almost the same thing that it's in like a music box. Or it could be a, a drop weight, you know, just something heavy pulling on it. Um, when I originally made it, it was turning this top piece like really, really fast. So I'll, all I did here then was stepped it down to, you know, something that would turn a lot slower, but it should go a lot longer. And that's all has to do with gear ratios and all that fun stuff. Okay, so again, we're going to kind of look at this while it's moving. This, this little spool right here is the spring's home. This is what it's wound up on. Um, every time it falls back, it turns it again. And it's wound on this other spool that's over here behind this big pulley. Um, and to wind it up, you would just kind of hold that and just rewind the spring. And you can see the inefficiency of these ropes on here. It's letting everything slip. You watch it it's slowly turning. It's because the belt that I've made are not really good for this. Um, I had to put rubber bands on all the pulleys just to give it away to make some traction. So if anybody's got any ideas on how to make something or what to use for belts on wooden pulleys, it's not going to slip. That would be super cool. Um, they don't slip all the time, but sometimes they do. And, and the trick to these things is making them super efficient. You know, you, you want to increase your efficiency everywhere you can. And obviously having, having the belt slipping and losing some of your spring tension is just kind of wasted energy. It's gonna be hard to see back there, but there's a couple little triggers back there that stop it from going any further forward until it falls back. And when it falls back, it kind of unlocks it and lets it throw it for another half a turn. And I will disassemble it here in just a second and kind of kind of show you what makes it work. the screw out of the way. All right, now this one is not very efficient, but the, the purpose that I'm making it for is a little bit different purpose than, than art. Now, if you want to look at some good artistic pieces, there's a physics professor by the name of David C. Roy that is really the gold standard 
for these kinetic sculptures. He started making them about 40 years ago, so he has like completely mastered it. Um, again, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to really make something super artsy. I was just trying to figure out the, the physics and the mechanics of, of how it works and efficiency is key. Um, on a lot of, all of these actually, I'm using just wood dowels and barons and washers and that, but if you really wanted to make it efficient, you would need something like um, brass rods, brass spacers, you know, keep everything nice and tight. All right, now this thing is still under under a load, but the switches in this top part work off of gravity. Of course, they can't work with it laying down because gravity no longer is then applied like it is when it's standing upright. Now, if you wanted to make one that would work laying down, you could use a ratchet ratchet system like in this one. Um, and all that does is have a little spring. And I thought I was going to use it, but any, any bit of resistance you have, even something like a light spring is gonna take away from the energy that it creates. So you want to try to free up as much stuff as you can. You know, now that thing's loose, you don't want to let it go into like a free will and spin because that spring will just go crazy. So I'm trying to hold it. So now that that's loose, we can take this off. And you can kind of see, that's a spring. It's just a flat wound, continuous force spring. And to show you, here's one that's not on anything, but that's kind of how it, kind of how it works. Um, a new one, is wound a lot tighter. It looks something similar to that. And these are only about 30 inches long. Of course, you can get longer ones or whatever. Um, of course, the longer one you have, the longer it would it would run. And they also put out different amounts of of power. I think these are about seven pounds worth of torque. And you can see after you use it for a while, it, it tends to lose some of its some of its tension due to deforming. Um, so that's pretty simple. I don't even have any bearings in that, and it's straight on a wooden shaft. You know, I mean that's pretty that's pretty simple. It's not very efficient, but it's pretty simple. Um, this side I did put some bearings in on that wooden shaft. And you see how much more efficient that is than just trying to run wood on wood. And that, I'm assuming, is what everybody kind of wants to look at. I don't know if I can make this work by hand or not, but I can try. Let's get it back on there.
All right, these little levers or what I were talking about are some of the gravity control. Because I try, I try to different ways to see which way I would like it better, but just using gravity, it doesn't require any doesn't require any extra force taken away from that spring. But so I got this camera up above me, so maybe you can kind of see this, what is happening. So it's putting constant tension on it. But it, when it comes to the top, it hits that peg, so I won't let it turn any further. It's also pushing on the main wheel But it'll only, when the wheel falls back, it'll catch on the one that's hanging down. And when it pulls, or when the weight of it falling back tries to keep going, it lets go of the top and gravity makes it fall. So then it's only hooked on this bottom one. And it pushes that on around until it hits the peg. But since the top wheel's not hooked to it, it just keeps spinning, 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 spinning until it runs out of gas and then it goes to the top, falls back, hits it, and it does it all over again. Um, that's pretty simple. And the pin here is positioned directly at the top. That way, when your wheel comes around, it won't it won't stop. It'll either stop on one side or the other. If it stops on this side, it's going to fall back. If it stops on this side, it just clicks past it. Then it's going to fall forward. There's kind of a point in there that if that pin there and this, this other little gravity peg wasn't there, it would, um, you know, it could possibly stop standing straight up. But since there's you know it's kind of right in the way, then that allows it to to keep going and, and falling backwards. And on the back back of this wheel, the little thing that you hear clicking is that. And that kind of works the same the same way. Um, it allows it to be put the wheel to be pushed when you're coming from this direction. So that's when it falls back. It falls back down and that allows it to grab a hold but when it's coming from the other direction it doesn't allow it to be and because this is the switch is so long all the weight is down here on the bottom which keeps it facing the right way all the time until it gets there and then you'll hear it flip back over but using Using weighted switches, it doesn't really hide it. You know, you can't really hide it back there because it has to be a little bit longer. Um, but that wasn't my point in doing that. I was just trying to make it as efficient as possible and by using something that didn't take away from the energy source. All these holes that you see in here, these have a bunch of lead in them and it's because this thing has to work it'll turn longer if it works like a flywheel, right? Everybody knows what a flywheel is for. But once it gets built up with energy, its own weight will carry it further and further and further. Um, but not only does it have to have like a flywheel effect, it also has to be an unbalanced flywheel because if it were perfectly balanced flywheel, it would never fall back. And so making it a little bit unbalanced It'll, it'll fall back and it'll work all the levers like it's supposed to. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how it all works. If you have any questions still, you can, you can ask me or send me a message or whatever. Um, but like I say, David C. Roy has a lot of these things that are, that are cool. My, my intention wasn't, if you look at this one, it has two pulleys on it. It has one in the back and one on the top um, and that's actually to to make something else move because I have an idea that I'm going to pursue my my plan wasn't just to make a kinetic sculpture I'm going to go a little 
little beyond that um, into seeing what else this thing can do. But I started with the basic kinetic sculpture just because I had to figure the the engineering of it out. Um, because though he, David C. Roy does have a lot of stuff on YouTube and has a website and everything, not a whole lot of people in there um, show you exactly how it works. Um, I don't know if it's something they're like trying to keep a trade secret or they want you to figure it out on your own. But this is just one way. You know, this is just a way that I figured out how to do it using, using gravity for it to fall back. I'm sure there's a dozen of different ways. Um, and, and there's several things I'm sure you can use for belts. This is just some paracord I took the inner strands out of and then I measured it to fit. I pulled it kind of inside of itself, put a little stitch in it and then heated and melted it where it was a continuous loop and it didn't really have a knot in it. Um, yeah, but so that's kind of, that's kind of all. That's kind of how it, how it works. And it's kind of, they're pretty neat in the way that they're, almost therapeutic to watch like a like a fireplace or anything else like that and I didn't think I would like the clicking so I wanted to make it as quiet as possible you know if you're going for just a sculpture type of thing like I say I have more of a purpose for it than that but I didn't think I would like the clicking but I actually do like the clicking it kind of reminds me of an old grandfather clock and that, along that is more the line of the direction I'm going to go with it. I'm not technically making a clock per se, but the inner workings of a clock are about the same. It uses a drop weight, some of them use a spring, and when they wind them up, they, they generally make them to where they'll last about eight days because they know if you rewind it once a week that they should be able to keep time that way. Um, so you kind of have a day's worth of play in there. And so my idea is going to be more off of how much longer you can make, make these things run and what else you could use them for. Um, there, it does even raise an eyebrow to potential alternative energy, you know, like an alternative alternative energy. No, this little flywheel right here is not going to create very much energy. But instead of putting the weights in the back of actual lead, let's say you put in magnets in the back, like some heavy neodymium magnets. Um, and and so to make a to make an electric generator, all you got to have is some magnets, some rotation, and a stator. And that's a whole other thing that I'll get into at a different point. But it does have some potential energy stored up in here that you could use for something else. It doesn't have to be electricity. It can be anything. Yeah, so if anybody's got any good ideas on belts against wood other than paracord and rubber bands to try to keep the friction up, I would love to hear about that. Okay, that's kind of all I got on this thing. If you guys have any more questions, just holler at me, send me a message. Um, the engineering of it when it comes to the phys physics and the mechanics is actually pretty simple. Um, but you don't know until you really get in there and do it. So. Do it. I'd like to see what it looks like.